so one switch for all the lights. Hello guys, welcome back, I am Sarmo the Bears. This is Stationeer's tutorial, Badge Reader and Badge Writer. My YouTube channel data shows you are here because of Google and YouTube search, which brings 77% of the traffic to my YouTube channel. 85% of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe to my channel if you find value in the content. This will help to reach more people just like you and grow the channel. Thank you very much. I'm going to dismantle this easy circuit and we will build it together from the scratch all right so we have some switches we have a batch reader oh shoot and we have a batch writer i'm not going to dismantle this light let's get started so i will install this uh, chip as a logic reader and this guy here is going to be logic writer and i will use one switch somewhere here so what is the difference between logic reader and batch reader so logic reader can read only one device so this is example like a switch so let's program it so logic reader will read this switch and we want to read the variable settings so if i will run this logic reader we can see it is zero which is like false and when I will switch the switch, we can see the settings is 1, which is basically true. And if we want to turn on these lights, we will use this logic writer. So input is going to be logic reader and output is going to be, let's say, this blue light. And we want to output the variable on or so just like this. Now we have the light running with one switch what if we want to run all these lights with one chip and with one switch i will take away this logic writer and i will place their batch writer so just like this and the programming is exactly same more or less so the input is going to be logic reader the output device will be a light, the wall light, and the variable will be on. So what is going to happen when I will switch this switch? All the lights are on because this is the batch writer. It will turn on or it will run all the devices which are same. And we want to turn on the wall light. So one switch for all the lights of course you can uh, use any device you want it can be solar panels it can be uh, generators it can be basically anything so you you will run all the devices which are same with one batch writer let's do something else i'm going to switch over this switch and i will remove this logic reader I will replace it with batch reader. So I need to find it. So this is the batch reader. This uh, batch writer is complaining because it doesn't, it can't find the logic reader which was there because I did remove it. So let's program this batch writer first. So the input is going to be this batch reader, just like that, All right? If I will turn it on, nothing is happening yet. So let's program this batch reader. So the input is going to be our switch, this one. We want to see the average. This is probably not the best example, but you will see what I mean in a minute. So a variable is going to be the setting, all right? So we can see we have zero. If I will switch this switch and this batch writer, the lights are on, all right? So I will switch it off and we will add one more switch. So what is going to happen next? We can see we are taking the average from these switches 
and this is zero and zero so the average is zero as well but if i will switch this switch over here the average is now 0 0.5 because we have two switches and one is one and the other one is zero so the average is 0 0.5 as i said but if i will switch this one as well the average is one so the batch reader is reading both switches and we can make uh, some kind of a end gate with batch reader if we want so it is uh, very good if you are building some kind of a advanced circuit batch reader is very powerful chip so let's add one more switch so i will switch this one and this one is switched off so we have the average 0 0.5 so let's add another switch and it is calculating the average again so it is 0 0.33 because two switches are off and one switch is on but if i will switch them on just like this now the lights are running so basically this is like a very easy end gate and that's why i use the batch reader and the switches so it works like a, all the switches needs to be on if you will switch one of them the circuit is not working just like that so i will build a little bit different example with something else the logic writer let's do a logic reader just like that and let's do a gas sensor just like this so let's program this easy circuit so logic reader the, in the input is gas sensor and we want to display the temperature temperature is fine so logic writer input is uh, the logic reader the output is going to be led display but which one we don't know so i'm going to re rename that led displays so this is going to be led one this is going to be led two just like that and this one is going to be led number three just like this so we do have the led renamed so what can we do so this is the logic writer so let's set the logic writer to write to led one this one and we want to display the setting right so if i will turn it on we can see the temperature in kelvins so this is it but what if we want to have this number on all the displays in this room so then we need to do something else we will use batch writer so let me fix it so i will take this logic writer and i will use batch writer so screwdriver for programming so input is logic reader just like this the output is going to be led display small because these are small led displays and we want to display the setting that's the variable that's the temperature so if i will turn it on we have exactly same number on all our led displays so let's do something just a little bit different we have one gas sensor and i did choose this example because imagine that you have some kind of a really really big uh, greenhouse so you will have a one uh, gas sensor here for uh, the temperature display I'm not going to connect it to anything this is just example so one uh, gas sensor is here one gas sensor will let's say i will place it somewhere here i'm not going to connect it to anything and this is your last gas sensor so if you want to do the temperature like uh, very very precise then you need more than one gas sensor because 
the gas in your greenhouse is flowing so the temperature in this corner doesn't need to be exactly same and it won't be exactly same like in this corner if you do some kind of a gas filtration so let's go back and i'm going to finish this uh, circuit so i will take my hand drill and i will take away this logic reader just like this and i will replace it with batch reader so this is the batch reader i need to program this circuit again so the input is batch reader everything else stays same but we are going to play with this batch reader a little bit more so the input device is going to be the gas sensor and we want to display uh, the temperature and we want to know the average temperature in in our imaginary greenhouse so i need to install more more gas sensors and basically what happens it will take the average temperature from these gas sensors because this is a batch reader it will read all the same devices in a network or in a room if they are behind a apc or area power control so if i will turn this on now we would have exactly precise average temperature in our greenhouse and we can send it to a let's say this is a room one this is room two and this is room number three so you you will send that number or you will send that numbers to all the displays you need and of course if you will have even like 10 led displays you will see that number everywhere if they are connected in same network independent content providers like me don't get paid for doing this we spend our time creating videos to help the gaming community Please consider hitting the like button and even subscribing to this channel. This helps the channel to grow and reach more people. Thank you very much.